There's no shame in it. Many of us are on a budget when we're looking to upgrade our car audio system by adding a subwoofer. Now, if you're willing to purchase used, there are definitely some great deals to be had that can have you saving hundreds of dollars off of retail with a used older model subwoofer. But it's very important that we make sure that subwoofer works. None of us want to end up with an expensive paperweight. After all, if we're meeting up with somebody to buy a used subwoofer, we might not be able to fully power the subwoofer and do all sorts of tests. So what are some simple, quick tests that we can do? Real quick, before we get into the content, I do want to thank monthly channel sponsor, Crutchfield. Crutchfield sells subwoofers and tons of other car audio gear, but a really cool program they have to help you save is their open box and scratch and dent options. Open box items are previous returns or items that have been opened for employee training and scratch and dent items have minor cosmetic damage. Crutchfield backs these items with a 60 day money back guarantee and those items still carry the manufacturer warranty. I've known many people that have taken advantage of this option and have been very satisfied. So if you're on a budget and you're looking to get some more current gear, this could be a great choice for you. Learn more and don't forget they have a special offer for car audio fabrication fans that you can check out at the link here on screen or down in the video description. So we've got a couple of different subwoofers here and the first test that we want to do right off the bat because this is the most important test is we want to measure the impedance of the voice coil on the subwoofer. So every subwoofer has what's called a voice coil. It's just a winding of wires around a tube. And when we run current through that winding of wires and it's in this magnetic field of this magnet, it's going to make the moving parts of the subwoofer move in and out. So to check the impedance, we're going to be connecting to the speaker terminals of the subwoofer using a multimeter. Now you don't need a fancy expensive multimeter. You can get away with using one that's less than $15. And I know some of you guys might be thinking, hey, I'm on a budget. I don't want to spend $15. $15 would be money well spent if you are planning on installing your own car audio system because you're going to want a multimeter to test different things anyhow. To test the impedance of the voice coil of the subwoofer, we're going to connect each of the two probes to those speaker terminal connections. It's not necessarily important to have positive connected to positive or negative connected to negative. You could switch these. So if the terminals aren't labeled on your older subwoofer that you're testing, don't be concerned. What we do want to make sure of though is that nothing is touching the cone of the speaker. We don't want it resting in this position. Let's flip it back over. We're going to turn on our multimeter. We're going to turn it to ohms here and we should get a measurement. Now this measurement is going to change slightly as I'm talking or if we do push on the cone, see how it's changing there. That's why you wanna make sure that the cone is good and isolated. So what value are we looking for here? Usually we're going to want to measure anywhere between one up to eight ohms. What's most important is that we do have some form of measurement. If there's no measurement whatsoever, which I can simulate by just disconnecting one of the wires, we're going to see that there is no connection. This would tell us that somewhere along that signal path, there is a break in the circuit and our subwoofer is not going to work when connected to an amp. Another good way to make sure this value is in a range that it should be is we can look at the back of the subwoofer and a lot of times the nominal impedance will be labeled on the subwoofer. In this case, we should be getting a value around four ohms, which we are. We are measuring about half an ohm off of that nominal impedance and this is very common. This is not something to be concerned about. This happens in nearly every subwoofer. Something we do want to pay attention to though is if the subwoofer has a dual voice coil. People get confused and they think that dual voice coil means that there are two separate voice coils. That's not really the case. It just means there are two different windings around one voice coil. And the purpose of this is it allows for more wiring flexibility in a system. If a subwoofer has dual voice coil, we definitely want to check each of those different windings and we want to make sure that we're checking one of those voice coils at a time. So each of these labels say VC2, which means voice coil two. This is the positive, this is the negative. Again, positive, negative doesn't really matter, but let's measure this coil first. Keeping in mind, we should be somewhere around four ohms, which we are at 4.4. Let's check the other coil. As a quick side note, right now I have the negative on voice coil one and the positive on voice coil two, and you can see we have no connection there. So that's why you wanna make sure you're measuring across one coil. So I fixed that wiring and now I have 4.3, an extremely small difference, not going to matter. Each of these voice coils is good, so this subwoofer should be good to go. But wait, is it good to go yet? There are definitely some other things that we want to check. First, let's focus on the different parts that we know move when this subwoofer moves in and out. The first of which being the surround here. 
For a lot of older subwoofers, this foam can break down over time, so you kind of want to test the integrity of it. If you push on it like this and it easily bounces back into position, it's going to be good to go. And obviously you want to look for any obvious tears or holes in that surround. The same goes for the cone and the dust cap of the subwoofer. We want to look for any physical damage there, any dents, any holes. We definitely don't want any air coming in and out through the subwoofer. But if there are any problems on any of those three things, it is nice that a lot of subwoofers can be re-coned. This does require new parts and oftentimes sending the subwoofer back to the manufacturer. So something to consider, it might still be of value if it's a higher end subwoofer to get it, even if one of these parts is damaged. But you'll want to do your research ahead of time to make sure that you can replace those parts. Another moving part you'll want to inspect here from the side of the subwoofer is this yellow part here with those ribs on it. That is called the spider. And you can see that it also moves as the subwoofer moves in and out. Same thing here, you're going to want to look for any physical damage, any holes, any tears, because that can compromise the performance of the sub. Another good test to do, and this is a very scientific term here, you got to do the old push test. So this is where you carefully push on the cone. You want to make sure that you're not going to dent the dust cap or anything so be careful on pushing on you know one little point with your finger or anything like that you want to spread out that pressure but you want to push the speaker in and out and you're going to put your ear close to the speaker and you want to listen for any rubbing if there's any sort of rubbing or scratching noise that tells you there might be something broken or some sort of foreign contaminant inside the gap of the voice coil any scratching or rubbing noise could be an indicator that the voice coil is starting to break free, that that wiring is starting to break down. And obviously, once you start playing this subwoofer, if you're hearing a little scratching noise just by pushing it in and out, that's going to be even louder once it's playing. Another area that's important to check is between the speaker terminals where you connect the speaker wire and where that goes into the spider of the subwoofer. A lot of times, over time, these connections here, these tinsel leads can fail. That's often a failure point. So you wanna look and see if there's any fraying or any sort of issues there. Another good visual test to perform. Now, what sort of issues should you not be concerned with? A lot of times with older subwoofers, if they're used, you're gonna see cosmetic damage like this. This damage here, if I just run my finger over it, I can tell this is just a scratch of that aluminum surface. This isn't actually a dent or any sort of hole through the speaker cone. So this is okay, we'd be good to go there, obviously just visually unappealing. This is also common, a lot of times you'll just see scratching on the basket of the speaker. You'll see some of the paint worn away. Again, this isn't going to have any impact on the performance of this sub. Another thing to keep an eye out for, a lot of subwoofers will have a foam gasket type material around the back side here, and that's to help seal the subwoofer really well to the enclosure. On a lot of older subwoofers, this gets kind of dried up and a lot of times it will stay stuck to the box. So if somebody's selling a used subwoofer without the box, you likely won't have that gasket material anymore. It's just something to pay attention to. And at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal because you can just use a piece of weather stripping from the hardware store. Now, don't forget that choosing the right subwoofer for your car audio system is just as important as making sure that it works. If you'd like to watch my video about the do's and don'ts of picking a subwoofer, definitely check out the link here on screen. Don't forget with show sponsor Crutchfield, you can take advantage of their scratch and dent or open box options and save. If you guys want to learn more about them and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, you can do so here at the link on screen or down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Thank you guys for watching.